Good evening everybody. I am Dr. A.M. Thirinjanam, Senior Interventional Cardiologist from Epcot Cardiac Center. Today I am going to talk about coronary angiogram indications. Why coronary angiography is advised by almost all the cardiologists? Because this, this angiography procedure is a very important procedure to see is there any occlusion or plaques deposit inside the coronary artery. Patient may develop chest pain even if they have normal coronary arteries. If they have coronary artery disease with 30% block or 40%, 50%, 60%, even 90%, even more than 100% block also, patient may develop chest pain. This angiography procedure is going to give clear picture about the in a treatment pattern for coronary, uh, coronary artery disease. And this coronary angiography procedure it gives more guidelines and treatment strategy in future. And this also helps to avoid heart failure in future by effectively treating this existing or anticipating the coronary disease in a high risk patients. Coronary angiography recommendation is based on three categories. We have first patient symptoms, the second is risk factors and third biological markers. Symptoms are very important because normally without any symptoms, we don't do any angiography. Without any basic like valid risk factors, we don't do angiography. And biological markers are also very important. So before recommending or doing coronary angiography, we see all three parameters, symptoms, risk factors and biological markers. At least patient should have two parameters like two steps verification always we check before doing angiography because ml of contrast agent during angiography because this angiography even it prevent heart failure in future it prevent sudden cardiac death it prevent patient life the symptoms of coronary artery disease patient may have chest pain the chest pain may radiate into left arm, jaws, right shoulder, back or lower, abdomen. Radiate in type. The pain character will be burning sensation, high pressure. Sometimes it can be vague pain and pressure on the chest. It, the pain may last 1 to 5 minutes. Sometimes it may extend to 10 minutes, not more than that. Generally, the pain gets uh, experienced by the patient when severe exertion, after exertion, even after taking food in exposure to cold environment, even winter season, cold environment, emotional stress, when they become more emotional, when they are like uh, mentally uh, like uh, disturbed, that type of movement can cause chest pain. Because based on the symptoms, even patient chest pain may be cardiac and non-cardiac. Here, by doing all the necessary investigations, we rule out the, whether the pain is cardiac or non-cardiac. Cardiac pain is a different strategy and non-cardiac pain is a different strategy of treatment we give to the patient. But especially non-cardiac pain may be knowing well, esophageal spasm, herpes joster on skin, esophageal rupture, hiatus hernia, costochondritis, pneumonia, lung pneumonia, smoker lungs, Bilary colic, cholangitis, cocaine toxic, chest rib fractures, even sometimes even pericarditis, infective pericarditis, viral pericarditis can cause chest pain, fluoritis, peptic ulcer, H. pylori infection, and uh, GRD, esophageal reflux disorder. This type of non cardiac disease can cause chest pain. But if the pain is not changed during inspiration or expiration, changing the position and changing the legs and doing exercise. If the pain is not relieved by position, definitely it could be cardiac origin. Suppose if the pain is exaggerated during exertion, then it could be cardiac. So after taking food, sometimes it could be gastritis. If you have pain, chest pain, relieves after taking food, it could be non-cardiac. A pain, the patient may have pain before food, after taking food, when the pain subsides, it could be a non-cardiac. 
because this is the way we differentiate the chest pains the risk factors as i said before diabetes is a very important risk factor everyone should understand and hypertension dyslipidemia stress heavy alcohol mild alcohol nothing will happen in a heavy alcohol more than 90 ml or 120 ml per day definitely that could be a detrimental to the heart and the smoking drugs abuse like sedentary lifestyle genetic factors sepsis cancer chronic inflammation unhealthy foods pollution global warming psychiatric disease recurrent surgery untimely food these all the very important risk factors can cause heart disease at present even in future or in near future because very important we have this um, these risk factors almost 90% of the risk factors are modifiable by changing our lifestyle we can get rid of heart disease we can get rid of sudden cardiac death so this is a very important i am stressing again and again taking the like a uh, healthy lifestyle and modifying the risk factors always help your heart and lengthen your life and also it prevents heart failure however even after doing all the investigation as i said before the investigations are very important here you can see the left side echocardiogram the echocardiogram is a normal echocardiogram the patient have chest pain but the chest pain as we used to do all the biological marker test echocardiogram before taking advice in the angiogram and ecg we took all the basic investigation non venous investigation but this echocardiogram is absolute normal function by seeing the echocardiogram by seeing the normal ejection function if there is no region wall motion abnormality heart dysfunction we cannot judge the patient no coronary arteries is going to be normal or will be normal during angiography because the patient symptoms important in that case biological markers may be negative echocardiogram may be negative that means in a, there won't be any abnormality but the patient symptoms very important we have to see other additional risk factors pa- patient age factors how he feels other than non cardiac symptoms so by collecting all this important informations we have to advise angiogram this patient normal echocardiogram in this angiogram we found two Uh, vessels involved block right coronary artery almost 90% block and left coronary artery almost 90% block in this echocardiogram you can see abnormal echocardiogram they are almost looking like uh, regional functional abnormality left ventricular hypertrophy heart muscles are thickened here on the right side the ecg you can see lot of st changes in the ecg like st changes and cure uh, cures duration changes but in this patient angiogram we performed the angiogram was normal because why i am telling means because selecting the patient for angiogram unnecessarily for all the chest pain it is unimportant to perform angiogram because the complexity of the patient coronary artery disease is a very devastating if we treat early the patient life will be saved the abnormal like uh, uh ecg and echocardiogram are going to be a normal angiogram so uh, again and again patient discomfort risk factors major complaint should be considered they may have other non cardiac symptom like giddiness sweating or vague symptoms sudden loss of energy weakness it could be a cardiac cause because non cardiac pain is very simple to differentiate between cardiac and non cardiac cause suppose if the pain is generally what we do we for the chest pain patient we give nitroglycerin tablet sublingual form or mononitrate dinitrate tablets if the patient pain is relieved by nitroglycerin mononitrate or dinitrate it could be cardiac pain if the pain is not relieved by nitroglycerin or mononitrate sorbinitrate it could be non cardiac pain so this is the simple way to differentiate cardiac and non cardiac pain because non cardiac pain it needs uh, elaborate investigation but cardiac pain is a simple once we establish the coronary artery disease once we confirm once we probability of coronary disease is more than 90% we can take the patient for angiography directly 
then after seeing the coronary angiography we treat according to the like uh, findings whether the block coronary uh, artery block is more than 50% or 60% 80 90% generally we do angioplasty when the cholesterol deposit is more than 70% or 70% if it is less than 70% we treat medically the patient record very well with the medications even after suppose if any doubt even after the like uh, either 70 percent disease even after maximum medical management if the patient is, gets severe pain we do fractional flow research ffr study if the ffr study is more than 70 percent we do angioplasty if it is less than that we don't do angioplasty so this is the way step by step we analyze the patient uh, patient with the chest pain and directly we don't take we don't advise coronary angiography for any patient unless we strongly suspect only one specific situation we advise urgent coronary angioplasty is called acute coronary syndrome heart attack that is called patient may develop obvious ecg changes st elevation or major st depression more than 2 mm 3 mm with the patient complaints of continuous angina severe angina angina will be class 3 to and class 4 so these are all the parameters we go through before doing angiogram without this like investigation evaluation we don't we never advise angiography the patient stable patient too, with the obvious like lv dysfunction heart failure if you want to undergo coronary angiography ct angiography okay you can go but again you have to come back to cat lab to assess the coronary artery disease lesion morphology to take decision whether to patient go for angioplasty or bypass surgery so obviously known coronary artery disease or probability of more than 90 percent 80 percent coronary artery disease they have to undergo conventional angiogram this angiogram is completely safe procedure there is no risk as i said before in my previous video the mortality is very limited so angiography is a very simple procedure and patient will not have any complications if your doctor cardiologist advised you to undergo angiogram you can safely undergo angiogram because the angiogram is not an ordinary procedure it is going to decide your lifespan because the lifespan is very important based on coronary anatomy because the mild plaque even uh, a mild plug as i said before even normal coronary arteries also patient will have chest pain due to spasm emotional stress but spasmodic pain anginal pain patient may not need continuous antiplatelets or dual antiplatelets statin treatment other more expensive anti-anginal drugs for that spasmodic anti-anginal drugs one or two drugs is sufficient especially diltiazem verapamil ecosprin or atrostatin so there is no need to add other expensive antigenal drugs by the way we are reducing the treatment cost suppose by angiogram if we found if the block is uh, 60 to 70 percent or 50 percent we can select the treatment strategy we can we can tailor the treatment we can frame the treatment very particularly to prevent the progression of the block or to prevent major heart attack in future so that way this angiography study will be helpful to the cardiologist suppose if the block is more than 75 percent a patient is symptomatic if the patient gets chest pain or shortness of breath while climbing on stairs while doing a small activity or mild to moderate activity that block should be treated as early as possible it is not necessary to wait for the medical management because even after the maximum antiangel drugs, maximum lipid lowering doses, maximum antiplatelet drugs, if a patient gets severe chest pain, the patient should be intervened either by angioplasty or bypass surgery. So take care friends and the next video I am going to give talk about pregnancy and heart disease. How a pregnant lady to take care of herself? And what are the medications should be avoided during pregnancy? And what are the safety medications a pregnant lady can take regarding this video? 
will be followed by next week sunday thank you bye bye again i am insisting you everybody should take covid vaccine complete vaccination wear face mask in the public places and try to avoid social gatherings see you next week bye bye thank you